wasn't that I wanted an abortion. I didn't. I felt like my baby would be better off not coming into this world. I wasn't any good for anybody. I was in my second trimester when the doctor said, I can do this, but it won't be easy. You'll have to give birth. So I went to the hospital. I was in labor for 24 hours. The kind of pain that can only be stopped at hearing your baby's first cry. I would never hear that cry. I'm sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. I went home and I just, I just wanted to die. I couldn't live with what I had done. I sat on the edge of my bed and I had a razor blade and I took that razor blade and I, I cut just the tiniest little slit and I wanted to keep going, but my phone rang. I answered the phone and it was a gentleman who had come to the church and he said, the Lord told me you were in trouble. The Lord says, if you will walk straight and narrow and trust in him, he will restore what the locusts have eaten in your life and give you back tenfold what Satan has taken from you. God loved me so much that he had this man call me and I promised the Lord that I would live for him. God in his mercy saw fit to bring someone in my life, my husband, who's the kindest, gentlest man I've ever known. And as things began to strengthen in our relationship, I thought, I've got to end this now. It's not even fair to him. I told him everything about my life and how it had been. I'll never forget his words. He said, it may have mattered at one point, but it's too late. I love you. And God has sent me into your life to undo those ugly things that have happened to you. We have to date been married 42 years. We have two daughters and two sons. It has been the most rewarding 42 years of my life. My husband, Carrie, is a gift from God. The Lord has given me all that I could have hoped for. I had happiness, but there was something lacking in my life. I realized that what I was missing was real joy. And I was missing that because I couldn't forgive myself for what I had done. I longed to see my daughter. I thought, how could there be no tears in heaven? When I get there, when she saw me, what would she say? Why did you do that, Mommy? And on the surface, I was happy, but I had no peace. I heard about a man who was holding a revival in Lakeland. His name was Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. So Carrie and I went, he was very willing because he knew the struggles that I had. And I sat through the whole service and nothing happened. So we got ready to leave and I was so disappointed. I was heartbroken. We were standing out in the foyer. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell on me and suddenly I fell down in the foyer and the Lord transported me to heaven. I looked up and I saw this red hue and it cleared up. I saw Christ sitting on a rock. He was sitting there in a white robe and he looked down at me and he had his hands on his tummy and he was laughing and he would lean down like this and he would just throw his head back and just laugh with sheer delight. But then it began to clear up on the left. I saw this little girl with pigtails and a little white dress and she was skipping and dancing and twirling around the feet of Jesus and he was laughing and enjoying her and all of a sudden she turned and looked at me. Our eyes met and I immediately recognized her as my daughter. 
reached and I wanted to touch her. I kept saying, just let me touch her. Just let me hold her. And she skipped over to Jesus and she tugged on his garment. And she looked down and pointed at me and said, look, Jesus, mommy's laughing. And he said, I know, isn't that wonderful? And then he turned and looked at me and he said, from this day forward, no longer will you minister out of your pain, but you will minister out of your joy. And I knew that there truly would be no tears in heaven. My daughter held no animosity toward me at all. She was eager to see me. She was happy to see me joyous. It changed my life. Seeing her will forever be a memory that I will cherish. Because God, what he did is he replaced that memory of that tiny little baby. And he replaced it with seeing my beautiful daughter dancing around the feet of Jesus. What a wonderful God we serve, who forgives completely. At that moment, I was able to forgive myself in believing that my sin was too great, was literally watering down the blood of Jesus because his blood was sufficient for all sin, no matter what we've done. His grace is sufficient.